Today on Internet Marketing Pro, we're going to cover 100 inbound marketing content ideas. Are you legally minimizing your future tax burden and staying compliant in today's complex tax code? If not, our sponsor, Mishlu Consulting, has over 30 years of experience providing top quality professional services in accounting and tax preparation for a wide variety of clients like you. Whether you need tax return filing, planning, bookkeeping, financial statements, full service payroll, or a corporate or individual tax return, I personally use and highly recommend the services of Jeffrey Ressler CPA, whose phone number is 561 237 5264. That is 561 237 Five two six four. Thank you very much. And remember, you can always look to the audio video description of this post for names, phone numbers, and links and references made during this program. Or you can get them by visiting cdeckard.com, chaddeckard.com, or ezinegenerator.com anytime as well. Broadcasting from the Great North Woods Lake region of Southern Maine. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to our Internet Marketing Pro and EZGenerator.com podcast show. Our shows will cover how to grow your business as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurism, and preeminent professional internet marketers. Thank you for tuning into our show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. Now, let's cover a few quick announcements before we get started. Like I always begin my shows, I really like to show my personal appreciation for all the feedback that we've been getting from you. What a difference it makes in motivating me to put these shows out and continually think of the next subject matter that we can explore together. We are always excited about helping us get more uh, subscribers and by subscribing yourself on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Smart Radio, and many other syndicates. If you like our show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment, and subscribe to our show. Be sure to visit ezinegenerator.com and become a free member of our highly resourceful total online marketing presence community. You will gain instant exclusive access and insight to over thousands of over-the-shoulder training videos, articles, RSS feeds, to over 500 resource websites relating to topics like analytics, content, email marketing, mobile marketing, search engine optimization and management, social network marketing and management, traffic, articles, white papers, <laughs> podcast interviews of preeminent leaders, current events, and much, much more. Whew, that's a lot. But finally, be sure to review our past archive shows on iTunes, Stitcher Smart Radio, YouTube, and Zoom because we have plenty of topics and information that are totally free to you and to others and for you to share for all those who are aggregating content out there on the Internet and on your social networks. Now, let's get down to business. All right, well, thank you for tuning in for this last of the five-part series that we're doing on 100 inbound marketing content ideas. And uh, we're going to pick up on last week's uh, Facebook content ideas on posting statuses on walls in just a moment. But, uh, you know, I've got to obviously may open with my intro as far as this show is concerned. For those of you that are, might be tuning in for the first time, I want to bear, you to bear in mind that there are four shows prior to this so that you know there's not just 20 content inspirational ideas here on this show, but I do have 80 more behind me. So go ahead and refer to the archive sections of wherever you've gotten this show. You can find me on YouTube you know, with uh, Internet Marketing Pro or under Chad Deckard. You'll see uh, plenty of different shows that I've done over the last year. You can find me on Stitcher Smart Radio and iTunes as well. So let's get on with the show here about content creation as being the core of every inbound marketer's job. And uh, from tweets to blog posts to Facebook page wall posts, there's a lot of copy and messaging engagement to push out there to your audience. And that's why inbound marketer's role is one that requires so much creativity. And uh, content doesn't have to be, you know, well, it, I'm sorry, it does have to be timely, accurate, relevant, thoughtful, unpredictable, informative, and even funny. The same old content day in and day out, it can get pretty stale and, you know, you'll lose your community engagement that you're after in the first place if you don't become funky fresh. So the question is, where do you come up with fresh ideas to accomplish that seven days a week? 
And what do you do when you just jump on for the first time to or the social presence, like on Twitter or Facebook or Pinterest? And what should your company be blogging about? This really gets a lot of people all pent up and uh, form a lot of anxiety or not come up with uh, any really great ideas. And you see a lot of junk, but hopefully uh, with this list of ideas, it is meant to inspire the content that you create for your community. You know, yeah, it's going to be broad and generic and focus, and it's not meant to focus too strictly on technology that helps you carry out these ideas. But it offers something for everyone in regards to helping you brainstorm to find and think of some fresh ideas of on your own that are relative to your subject matter. And so we're going to cover the last 20 of 100 of these ideas that we've been going over over the last four shows. And then I'm going to end with a commentary. So let's pick up on last week where we left off on Facebook content ideas as far as posting statuses on walls. And then this is number 81. Ask for your community's ideas. Ask them what they would like to see in their next blog post, ebook, webinar, advertisement, or event. And actually, you can take that a little bit further as far as asking them what type of products and services they'd want because any marketer will tell you it's better for you to do that and shop that around for a while and do that thorough research instead of spending all the time and the effort in creating a product and then realizing nobody really wants it or wants to buy it and you've just thrown away all that time and effort and money. So uh, that's, a, that's a great uh, point right there. Number 82, tell the first part of a joke and then let your community finish it. Example, why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> that's an old one. 83, tell a riddle. Number 84, ask a hypothetical question. Here's an example would you rather blank or if you could blank you know let people finish the sentence some people got some really creative ideas when you do that you'd be amazed what you come up with and so uh yeah i remember being a kid i used to play with these uh, little uh books my mom would buy and they're called ad libs and you'd fill in a blank use a verb use a pronoun use a noun my brother and i would have a you know, a ball doing that, we'd get really funny, almost crack up and almost start laughing. Anyway, let's move on. 85, share links to your blog posts on your wall and use the status area to put out one key fact, statistic or tip from the post as a teaser. 86, share a link to your weekly or monthly newsletter. Create a custom tab for signing up for an email newsletter with a tool like ShortStack. Yes, I said ShortStack. Make sure to keep the sign-up form on the Facebook tab for a higher conversion rates. 87. Share information about your company, news coverage, job openings, promotions, and milestones. Use numbers as those stand out to people the most. And now, the next type of content we can talk about in my content idea inspiration list would be photos. Lots of us use photos and you know, everybody heard that a, a photo is worth a thousand words. Number 88, tag real people in photos. Their friends will see those photos and it will drive a new audience to your page. Number 89, post a mystery photo. Have people guess who the mystery person is, what the secret object is, or what the location is in the comments. Number 90, host a caption contest. Get people to write the best caption for your photo. Number 91, share pictures from a local meetup or event or conference. 92, did you interview an industry expert from your blog? If so, post pictures of that interview in action on Facebook and offer your fans a behind-the-scenes glimpse. They want to feel special, too. 93, post pictures from a conference. Number 94, Post pictures of your product. Use the captions for descriptions. Here's an example. Recipes, style tips, an update about new features, etc. If you want to see this in action too as well, you can go to my personal Facebook profile, Chad Deckard. And uh, in my pictures, I've created a photo album with the each of the show graphics I use for each one of these shows on YouTube and mostly any of the video ones. And uh, I break every show down as a picture album, and people can go through that, click it, and it'll take them to the YouTube video, and they can watch the relative show to the picture of uh, that slide that I used to uh, name the show. 
Okay, let's move on. Uh, we've got uh, 95. Compare and contrast two products in a photo. Prompt your community to add their thoughts in the comments. Number 96. If you share an infographic or image on your blog, share just the image on your Facebook page and a link to the post on your page as a teaser. Number 97. Use the top photo strip of your Facebook page in a creative way. You know, spell out a word for a particular campaign, make a cartoon by connecting the images, or show unique headshot of employees. I use it to personally brand myself, but I've seen a lot of really cool ideas, and that one's a pretty cool idea as well. So get creative with your, uh, your uh, images on your Facebook header. Number 98, celebrate holidays. Post a status wishing everyone a happy whatever. Use the demographics information in Facebook Insights to learn more about what regions are represented in your community. And that way, you know, you can be relative to not only maybe say the United States or Canada or Mexico or whatever country you are, you're also relating to other people in their countries. And uh, they'll very much appreciate uh, you acknowledging their holiday and number 99 use the feedback metric in facebook's insights to see which statuses get the highest percentage replicate the type of content as this is the kind of content with the highest engagement and best value for newsfeed optimization so basically like i was saying earlier in a previous show some of my shows are total winners and some of them are just they're not total losers I and mean, every show is a winner but it's just a matter of how hot you know how full the cup gets and I, you know, from that, I hope to discover uh, now that I've done, you know, over 50 plus shows here in the last year, what types of content my listeners like the most. And I'm usually seeing that or judging it based on what, you know, what type of content gets the most downloads. Obviously, your comments help as well. So if you have some subject matters you would like for me to cover or that are of interest the most to you. Uh, those who share will receive, so uh, please feel free to let me know what you like to see or hear. And finally, number 100, the end of the list, finally we're here. Here we go. It's add a UTM codes, which are Google Analytic in nature, to the links you share on Facebook to track what leads are coming to your website from the page. So uh, that's the end of 100. But I got a quick commentary before we end this program. And that's about creating content is just the first step because there's so much more. These are uh, the first steps in using blogging and social media to attract leads to your business. Most importantly, you'll want to ensure that the blog posts you write and share on social channels like Twitter and Facebook are optimized for search engines so that you aren't just attracting any kind of visitors, but targeted audience that can convert into a customer ultimately, because we're not just doing this to do this. I mean, some people are attention seekers, of course, but I would assume that here I am talking to people who are internet marketers that have an intent to not just do this just to do it, but they're doing it so that they obviously can make a living or keep their job and actually sell something or at least potentially lead someone to a sale in the future by building trust. Now here are four tips to make the most of your content. Number one, you have first-hand control of your own page SEO, so no excuses. Optimize for it. Make sure you target the right keywords and search pages for your business and that you are consistent. The areas that you'll want to do this with are in your meta tags page titles and page descriptions. You also want to do this throughout your blog post copy and especially in your H1 text or blog post headlines. Here's something to think about. Google doesn't laugh. A cutesy phrase or rhyme appeals to humans in your headlines, but Google may not recognize its relevance. But later on, when humans Google your keywords, you'll want your content to show up, and it won't if it isn't optimized for search engines. So you can work around this through by rewriting your page title as a more literal description of the content and keeping in an entertaining headline that draws your audience in when they see it shared on a social media. Well, here's a couple, you know, I would say an example that Wall Street Journal obviously used. And... Um, 
I don't know if it's going to be really relevant as far as because, you know, they show it on a page here from the script that I'm reading. But it's called, you know, the headline they use is Video Kills the Radio Czar. And you can use tools such as Google's keywords, a research to, uh, tool to identify. Well, obviously, I don't know if that's actually still in play or not. But you can identify the right keywords and alternative phrases to use it in your content and research what popular search phrases there are for you to use in Google Insights. Additionally, you can also use you know, HubSpot's content management software, which includes a keyword grader tool that analyzes which keywords are performing the best. So uh, if Google's not around, you can always go to HubSpot, who's got a great um, software and a great company. So you can refer to a link in my description to take you there if you need so. But uh, the second point that I like to make is set an editory calendar and stick to it. I've talked about this before, obviously, in a show. I did a whole show on it. And it shows that our research that companies with blogs get 55% more website traffic that and that number goes up exponentially whether you post once a week twice a week and then up to several times a week wherein if you become a thought leader in your field our advice is blog as often as you can while keeping the content valuable for your prospects so it's all about quality more than quantity remember that number three include call to actions on every post because that's just how you're going to engage people. If you're going to give away plenty of information for free with your blog content and through the social channels you share it on, you want to optimize that content with calls to action so that you can get something in return. You know, prospects converting into leads include calls to action for ebooks, webinars, newsletters, podcasts, or events. Anything more substantial than a blog post that warrants a prospect filling out a form where they can get more valuable content from you and where you can get closer to converting them into a customer. That's the ultimate goal, right? You want something for, you know, you want to give something not for nothing, but to actually accomplish something. And that's obviously to get the customer. And you want all your calls to action to match your content, like completing your outfit by matching your shirt with your shoes. Or if you're offering nutritional tips in a blog post, offer a call to action for something related, like a nutritional seminar. It's related content and value, valuable to your target audience. So you're not only attracting them in the first place, but you're also asking them to keep the engagement going further down the funnel. So, uh, you know, another once again, I'd like to refer to HubSpot's content management system, which includes a module for your calls to action. You know, it makes it easy for you to organize them and plug them right into your blog post before it hits publish. So it's really a no-brainer. It's a great way to manage your content and come up with the uh, already proven uh, content mechanisms to engage and uh, get uh, your audience to do it, calls to action that you want them that work. Sorry. Number four, when it comes to social media, share often. Search is now social. In addition to keywords, search engines like Google consider tweets, Facebook likes, and Google One Plus or Plus Ones in their algorithms. So the more that your content is shared, the higher it will rank. Remember that not Every prospect lives in your time zone, so one tweet of a blog post is not enough. If you're in New York City and you tweet your blog at 9 a.m. and your prospects in San Francisco are still asleep, they will rise and miss your content if they aren't subscribed to your blog through RSS or email yet. So space out a couple of tweets and Facebook posts of your blog articles to ensure that all of your target audience members see them. And last but not least, don't forget that the weekend is often a time when people catch up on reading and they don't have time to do during the week. So a few tweets on your post on the Saturday afternoon can certainly help your traffic. So, you know, your final step is your full inbound marketing strategy means attracting prospects with this content and converting them and then analyzing the results to see which of the ideas work for your brand and audience. And so that comes to an end of our five part series on 100 inbound marketing content ideas. I really hope that uh, this series has inspired you to be able to unblock that writer's block that you might have in coming up with some really killer ideas to keep the content flowing. 
So uh, I'd really love to hear your comments about these shows or if you have any ideas that might not have been included in my 100 ideas here that I could include and make it maybe 110 ideas in the future. That would be awesome. So uh, comments are welcome. And I ask you to please subscribe yourself to the show if you like this content and you want to receive more of it in the future, as well as please share this content on your social networks. I will greatly appreciate it. And uh, that's about it for this week. So I hope that you tune in next week. We've got some really great uh, shows ahead of us. And don't forget that we have an archive of tons of different shows and another 80 different ideas that were covered in previous show, four previous shows to this one. So have a great week.